Welcome. Today is August 7th, 2015, and today I'm going to talk about the solution to Greek's debt problem. Several weeks ago, Mr. Alexis Tsipras, I read a story emanating from the Greek newspaper Tovima that you had asked Russia's President Vladimir Putin for a $10 billion loan to print drachmas. I've heard people refer to Tovima as the equivalent of the Mirror in the UK or the National Enquirer in the US, but to be honest, I really don't know anything about Tovima, so I don't know if this is true or not. But the irony is that people actually believe mainstream financial publications like Rupert Murdoch's Wall Street Journal or the UK Financial Times and New York Times, Forbes and Fortune magazines are credible when often the financial news reported by these mainstream publications are as credible as a report about an alien abduction, Yeti, or Bigfoot sightings. In any event, the only journalist I know uh, that wrote any credible information that challenged the banker and government narrative was Pedro de Costa of the Wall Street Journal and who recently just resigned or more likely was forced out from the Wall Street Journal after asking Jan Janet Yellen of the Fed Reserve some very tough questions. So further revelations however from Zero Hedge seem to point to the plausibility of your ask of Putin, Mr. Cyprus, and if that indeed were true, though this supposition was ridiculed earlier, then it's an interesting avenue to explore. According to the Financial Times, former Greek energy minister Panayotis Lafanzanis convened a quote, secret meeting at the Oscar Hotel in Athens on July 14th at which he attempted to convince Syriza, other Syriza party members to storm the Greek mint, seize the country's currency reserves, and if necessary, arrest central bank governor Yanis Stornaris. So to date, actually, that sounds like the best plan you've had so far. Too bad he didn't succeed because that would have been actually the first correct step that your government would have taken so far. In addition, as of recent times, a uh, Greek news website, uh, what was it called? Kata Marini reported that Mr. Varoufakis as the former finance minister had been quote unquote authorized by Alexis Tsipras last December to look into a parallel payment system that would operate using wiretap tax registration numbers, otherwise known as AFMs in Greece, and could eventually work out as a parallel banking system. The report further went to state the plan would involve hijacking the AFMs of taxpayers and corporations by hacking into General Secretariat of Public Revenue's website. This would allow the creation of a parallel system that could operate if banks were forced to close and which would allow payments to be made between third parties and the state and could eventually lead to the creation of a parallel banking system." End quote. The report continues, quote, Varoufakis said he assigned a childhood friend of his, an information technology expert who became a professor at Columbia University, to hack into the system. A week after Varoufakis took over the ministry, he said the friend telephoned him and said he had control of the hardware, but not the software, which belongs to the Troika. And of course, this would be euro denominated, but at the drop of a hat, it could be converted to a new drachma, end quote. However, Mr. Varoufakis, in the same story you, you quoted, quote, but let me tell you, this is very interesting, and this is quite a fascinating story. What difficulties I faced. The General Secretary of Public Revenues within my ministry is controlled fully and directly by the Troika. It was not under control of my ministry, of me as a minister. It was controlled by Brussels. The General Secretary is appointed effectively through a process which is Troika controlled and the whole mechanism within. It's like the inland revenue in the UK being controlled by Brussels. I am sure as you are hearing these words, your hair is standing on end." end quote. About Germany's finance minister, Wolfgang Schauble. This is what Varoufakis said. Schauble has a plan. The way he described it to me is very simple. He believes that the Eurozone is not sustainable. He said explicitly to me that Agrexa is going to equip him with sufficient bargaining sufficient terrorizing power in order to impose upon the French that which Paris has been resisting. 
And what is that? A degree of transfer of budget-making powers from Paris to Brussels, end quote. Because of your seemingly 180, Mr. Cyprus, many are now claiming that only Mr. Varoufakis was willing to fight for the Greek people, while you were always willing to sacrifice yourself as a pawn to be used by the purpose of George Soros and the Troika. I have no idea whether this is true, and in my eyes, the knowledge of this is actually irrelevant because if you really want to return Greece to a nation of prosperity, Mr. Cyprus and Mr. Varoufakis, this is what you need to do, as the actions are quite simple. And actions and not the words of politicians are how all people are going to judge your integrity or lack thereof and your legacy. So number one. Declare all Greek debts illegitimate. Okay. Declare all Greek debts imposed by the IMF and the ECB for what they really are, illegitimate. Absolve Greece and the Greek people from the, these illegitimate debts and declare Greece debt free from all the debts imposed upon your nation that were used to draw you into the EU. Goldman Sachs bankers immorally structured your debt to mask your true deficit to allow Greece to be part of the EU when this never should have happened. So at the time to gain admission into the EU, the rules stipulated that countries couldn't exceed 60% total government debt to GDP ratios, and now Greece is approaching 1,000% total debt to GDP. So obviously what happened is Goldman Sachs bankers hid your true debt by restructuring it to hide it from the public so you could gain entrance into the EU because the GDP to debt ratio of nearly 1000% does not happen overnight or just doesn't even happen since you joined the EU. It's impossible. So Goldman Sachs bankers are largely to blame for the massive growth of Greek debt to GDP of nearly 1000% and uh, the same thing happened actually with Italy and with many other EU countries that are now walling, wallowing in unsustainable and unpayable debt. It's, since it's illegitimate, write it off from your books. Number two, arrest all bankers in your country. Declare all global bankers for what they are, plundering and pillaging thieves and drive every single last one out from the borders of your country by putting out all points bulletins for their immediate arrest and incarceration for life with no chance of parole. Regarding this one, of course, I don't mean arrest 100% of all the bankers in your country, but arrest the ones that are plundering and pillaging your nation and looting all its assets because you know who they are. They're members of the Troika. And in addition, all the banks that are operating as casinos and hedge funds that are masquerading as banks need to be kicked out of your country. So only allow banks to operate as banks to continue operating in your country. And actually, you would have to overhaul your whole national banking system to do this. So if banks don't agree to operate as a bank, they still want to operate as a hedge fund, as a casino, kick them out of your country. And if you don't know what that means, merely study the operations of the 1609 Bank of Amsterdam. Use that as a model to incorporate real banking and return real banking to your country. And number three, establish a sound monetary system. And that is the most important one of the three. I mean, they're all important, but this one, you need to hold on to your 112 and a half tons of gold reserves and use it to establish a gold monetary system. It's almost actually a blessing that the secret parallel monetary system that you, Mr. Cyprus, and you, Mr. Varoufakis, were developing didn't actually come to fruition because a system in which euros could be immediately converted to drachmas really is no better unless you're going to back the drachma 100% by gold, which I don't know if that's the case because changing euros into drachmas um, for, what, for one is basically trading a, a ticking time bomb with a long fuse or a ticking time bomb with a short fuse. So changing one fiat currency into another is not going to return Greece to prosperity as a fiat currency with no intrinsic value other than the computer bytes upon which they would have been stored is not a long-term solution. So all fiat currencies are illegitimate. 
Mr. Varoufakis, you did mention a new drachma, however. So, like I said, if this drachma were 100% backed by gold or by silver, then this new drachma would have been acceptable, but only under those conditions. But if the new drachma is backed by nothing but the empty promises of bankers, it would not. And I want to say, Mr. Cyprus, if you don't understand why a gold standard will pull your country out of the future with zero hope, as it stands now, and return it to a track of recovery and eventually solid sustainable growth with a real chance of economic prosperity at some point many years down the road, then contact me. If you were truly were debating whether to use the euro or return to the drachma as Greek's national currency, then I would say that you don't understand the difference between unsound and sound money or the definition of a real gold standard. If you did, then you would have secretly planned to return Greece to a gold standard, not to another fiat currency like the drachma. A gold standard is often wrongly defined as a fixed convertibility between a currency and gold, whereby a nation's gold reserves provides a limit to how much currency it can issue. However, this is not the real definition of a true gold standard, but rather the definition of a gold component system that existed under Bretton Woods. It was established in 1944, ended by President, President Nixon in 1971. But in any event, the Bretton Woods system was not a true gold standard, as the gold component standard still served the interests of the bankers, first and foremost, and not the interests of the public as a true gold standard should. The only thing that should be fixed under a true gold standard is the weight of gold that is to serve as the monetary unit in that particular nation. The fact that most people believe a gold standard limits how much currency a nation can issue already reveals that the majority of people's understanding of a real gold standard is wrong. Under a real gold standard, the amount of gold backing the standard would never constrain economic growth. While it's true that gold would serve as, as a constraint on banker manipulation of asset prices and the banker's ability to create bubbles and then crash these bubbles, this is a hugely different concept than saying that gold would serve as a constraint on economic growth, which is the very false description of a gold standard that bankers want you to believe, although it's not true. A system in which all other global currencies must maintain a fixed exchange rate within a very small margin of fluctuation to the US dollar, as was well a structure set up by US bankers under Bretton Woods, cannot possibly be a real gold standard, as it violates every principle of a real gold standard. So if you think also that the price of gold is too low right now at around $1,100 an ounce to support a return to a true gold standard, then watch my upcoming videos, Ounces Over Dollars, and you will understand why this additional misinformed belief is also false. And lastly, Mr. Cypress, if you don't think that your country has enough gold to return your country to gold standard, then you don't understand what is a real gold standard. Because there is no country in the world today whose currency is officially on a gold standard, your country's new gold standard would immediately return your country's currency to become the strongest money in the entire world and would immediately start Greece on the road to recovery. And if you so desired, you could take your gold reserves and convert them into silver and put your country on a pure silver standard. If you understand what is real money, then you would understand that the false prices that bankers have currently established for gold and silver as of August 2015 gives you enormous value in regards to price if you were to purchase additional gold and silver during the final phase of this banker manipulation of prices downward. So you better gain, uh, better gain an understanding before the Troika seizes every last ounce of the 3,616,875 troy ounces of gold that the Greek government holds for the Greek people, not to pay back the plundering bankers. And if you allow the Troika to raid, plunder, and steal Greece's gold, as is surely their plan under this third bailout plan, then all hope for Greece is destroyed at this point. The difference between a real gold standard and the banker definition of a gold standard is as significant as the difference between night and day. Keynes himself said, there, quote, there is no subtler, no surer means of overturning the existing basis of society than to debauch the currency, end quote, and that not one in a million people would understand the statement. 
This statement also means that anyone that wants to return to continue using the euro or thinks that a return to the use of the drachma in Greece would save Greece has zero comprehension of this statement. U.S. Central Banker Alan Greenspan in congressional testimony on 17th of February 2000 testified that he could not define money. This was a total lie. Does anyone really believe that the chairman of the most powerful central bank in the world cannot define money? Greenspan really refused to define money when he was asked to define money, not because he could not, but rather because if he did, then everyone would have realized 15 years ago that we are using counterfeit and fake fiat currencies that all lack the most essential qualities that all sound money should possess. I'm not going to tell you what these essential qualities are that the euro, pound, yen, uh, dollar all lack because I want you to think about whether or not you know what these essential qualities are as I have identified nine of these essential qualities myself. If you find that you can't define these nine qualities that all money should have, Mr. Sippers, then it's really far-fetched is it really far-fetched to think that your understanding of a gold standard may be totally twisted and damaged by centuries of banker propaganda? Keynes said that not only that not one in a million men would understand why devaluing fiat currencies is exactly the same as overturning the very basis and foundation of a fair and equitable, equitable society, but the fact that this is going on now and people don't connect the dots and understand that is very alarming. So if you understand this, and I really hope you do, then you would understand that keeping the euro as a currency for Greece is not a temporary reprieve, but instead a certain death sentence for all your people. I also believe that not one in a million men really understand what is a true gold standard, how it should be set up and how it should be carried out. So that this open letter to you, Mr. Sippers, doesn't go on forever. I will lay out some more details of how a real gold standard should operate in upcoming videos on my Smart Knowledge U YouTube channel. Please watch my What is the Fair Value of Gold and my Ounces Over Dollars videos that I will release very shortly in the upcoming weeks. Finally, to all Greek people, we stand in solidarity with you. Because as I said above, the US is Greece, Spain is Greece, Italy is Greece, France is Greece, and all other countries that are being looted by criminal bankers will be having the exact same struggles that you are having in your country now if we do not stand up in solidarity with you. Bankers want you to think that you have no power and no choice but to lie down at their feet so they can stomp on your heads as they collect their money and empty your country's bank accounts and gold reserves and loot your country's assets. However, even as terrible as things are economically in Greece right now, if all Greek citizens united refuse to deal in euros, convert it as many of your euros into physical gold and physical silver, take your choice, you can start dozens and dozens and dozens if not hundreds of local and regional underground black markets in which you only bartered using the sound money of your choice precious metals. You could get around the immoral 10% VAT tax that bankers are placing on your food to repay themselves and their debts and other basic necessities of life because you could rebel and report nothing about these transactions using precious metals to the bankers. And by this time, you would have routed the bankers from your country already. Your Greek cities could pull money to buy ultrasound machines that can test for the purity of gold and silver to ensure the purity of precious metals circulating in these black markets in the underground Greek economy to make sure that people were not getting ripped off and that indeed everyone was bartering in sound money that was 495 gold or silver. So think about it, return to precious metals kick out the criminal bankers from your country and lead the world back to monetary freedom. There are millions of Americans that to make a statement that the US is Greece that would say that statement is idiotic. And you're right, it is idiotic because the US situation is likely worse than Greece's situation from a strictly numerical perspective. Because Greece's net government liabilities, according to Sockchan's Albert Edwards, again, as, as I mentioned before, is is approaching 1,000% of debt to GDP. Obviously, unsustainable situation. In the US, 
a couple of congressmen stated that the U.S. to GDP ratio was over 500 percent. And one used the amount of government bonds outstanding at 87 trillion dollars compared to the U.S. GDP of about 17.4 trillion dollars. But here's the kicker: Boston University economist Lawrence Kotlikoff says when he calculates U.S. debt by the way you're supposed to do it, he said not by the way bankers and politicians calculate uh, national debt. He said it's not 87 trillion dollars, it's not 17 trillion dollars, but it's more than double even 87 trillion dollars. He said if you include unfunded liabilities like social security payments, health care, Medicare payments, Medicaid payments, and defense expenditures, all of which are real liabilities that have to be paid back, the real U.S. government debt balloons from $87 trillion to $222 trillion. So regarding this fiscal gap of unfunded liabilities, the U.S. is in the worst shape economically of any developed country in the world, even worse than Greece. And furthermore, anyone that understands an iota of how the U.S. government calculates its GDP knows that the official number of $17.4 trillion is also a false number, and the official GDP numbers are also always artificially inflated to make the number appear much better than it actually is. So even using the artificially inflated GDP number, if you take the real USG debt at $222 trillion, then the US debt to GDP ratio is 1,276%, which exceeds Greece, which is only approaching 1,000% right now. So the only, and I do mean only reason, Greece is in dire economic straits right now, and the US is not, is because Greece doesn't have Private, a private banking cartel like the U.S. does in the form of Janet Yellen and the U.S. Federal Reserve that can create unlimited currencies out of thin air to meet whatever debt and interest payments uh, are due to pay down the debt. So eventually, this foolish practice will end up killing the U.S. dollar too. And I don't mean the U.S. dollar has to go the way the Zimbabwe dollar where it will eventually cost Americans more than $1.4 billion to pay for a meal as it did in Zimbabwe. But anyone that understands even the slightest sliver about real economics will understand that the U.S. dollar in its current form can not and will not survive over the next decade and when it has to be replaced by a new currency and it will and it will soon probably before this decade is over maybe even within the next five years that will mean that the usd dollar was hyperinflated and that it did die because anytime you cancel a current currency and replace it with a new one means that it hyperinflated into debt and there can be no other interpretation of such an event. So to all Greek people, the current course your government has set for you ensures the enslavement not only of you, but unfortunately your children and likely your grandchildren for more than the next half a century. That is why the rescinding of these austerity measures imposed by the bailout and, by, and the three measures which I outlined for you to restore freedom and prosperity to your nation really are your only option. You want to stop the numerous Greek businesses that are planning to flee Greece due to draconian capital controls that bankers are imposing upon your country as part of these austerity measures, then implement a gold or silver standard that illustrates your commitment to the future generations of people in your country and you have a chance of keeping these businesses at home. And you lose these businesses because of these draconian austerity measures being imposed by the Troika and uh, they leave the country, then your future becomes even more bleak. But impose a gold standard, a silver standard, whether it has to be through the people's will, if the leaders of your country are not willing to do it by starting black markets, then you, you, can, you might have a chance of keeping these businesses at home. Stay in the euro and you have a good chance of driving all Greeks into poverty. Exit the euro and return to fiat drachma and you still have a good chance of being driven into poverty after a slight respite from the austerity measures that are going now. Exiting the euro and the EU is not the solution alone, but exiting and then making the proper choice of how to rebuild is essential. Remember, if you do as I say, the whole world will stand behind you because, because it's just not in Greece that people are tired of criminal bankers. People in every country in the world are tired and looking for a nation to rally around. So be that nation, help us rally around you, and be the rallying point. Thanks for watching, and as always, remain intensely curious. Until next time, 
So long. Know that I've been waiting for so long. You're all that I see.